with the people concerned. Hi, I'm here with John Messeri, Executive Director, CEO of The People Concerned. Tell me a little bit about The People Concerned's history. We've been in this community for 54 years. Today, we've grown into a multifaceted human services organization. You went from OPPC to The People Concerned and LAMP, which was an integral part of the downtown community, is now part of the people concern as well. Correct. So we started off as the Ocean Park Community Center, which morphed into OPCC, and that's really because people who knew the agency always referred to us as OPCC. And a little over two years ago, we started the process of merging with LAMP Community, which is a provider based in downtown in Skid Row. LAMP was started by one of my predecessors here at OPCC, a woman by the name of Molly Lowry, wonderful woman who'd been with the agency for about eight years as the executive director. And then she left in 1984 to go downtown and start LAMP Community in 1985. So unlike any other human service organization in Los Angeles, we have this shared, what we say, DNA through Molly. And unfortunately, Molly passed away last year. Steve Lopez is a great columnist in the Los Angeles Times. He wrote a few years ago about Nathaniel, right. and Nathaniel became a member of yes. the LAMP community. Correct. Tell me what LAMP does. Tell me a little bit about LAMP, about Sojourn, about all of your other the parts of the people concerned. Well, the people concerned, as I said, is a multifaceted human service organization. So we do everything from street outreach, where we have mobile interdisciplinary teams that go out um, in public spaces, to the parks, to the beaches, under freeway overpasses, anywhere in public where homeless people are, to engage them. Of course, our ultimate goal is to enroll them in, in housing and services. We operate an access center here um, in Santa Monica, where we have a primary care clinic. We provide um, on-site primary medical care for homeless individuals. We have food, clothing, showers, lockers, um, restroom facilities for homeless individuals and human needs. So we do everything from what I would describe as basic emergency services all the way through permanent supportive housing and a lot in between. So we operate several interim housing programs and people who have moved off the streets and on their way to permanent housing. We provide mental health care, substance use, wellness programs, money management for individuals. We work very closely with Chrysalis here on the employment side, so we will house individuals who are involved in Chrysalis's job training program. We actually operate the second oldest domestic violence shelter in the state of California, Sojourn. Um, which was started by a group of volunteers here in the community is 40 years old this year. Similar services really targeting the downtown Skid Row community and really working with very seriously mentally ill individuals. Give me the difference between Sam Michelle and the facility next door yes. on 5th. So you provide bathrooms. Are those 24 hours a day? No. So Sam Michelle is one of our interim housing programs. So for residents who live in Santa Monica are probably familiar with the large white tent structure just off the 4th or 5th Street exit on Olympic that was actually put up by the city in 1994 when they passed the public safety ordinance. As an alternative to sleeping in public places, Sam Michelle was created, and it's been there for 23 years. Right next to that is our access center. That's where we have the clinic, we have restroom facilities, shower facilities, locker facilities for case management. Our ultimate goal is to assist people meet their basic needs, but also to assist them in moving off the streets. The shower and, and restroom facilities are open seven days a week. Where do those homeless individuals shower? Where do they go to the bathroom when you're not open in the well, city of Santa Monica? Well, our public restrooms, um, our shower and restroom facilities are open until about 6 in the evening, about 12 hours a day. The other 12 hours of the day, people have to find alternatives, and so they generally will use other public facilities. So should we add portable restrooms in the city? I hear from residents they are very upset. Should the city be doing what they've done, I think, in Seattle and Portland and San Francisco, adding public restrooms that are open 24 hours a day. I'm not sure that that portable units are the answer. If you're going to have any, any facility that's open to the public needs to be well managed. And we've seen this certainly in downtown. There are portable units that have just come online, but they're actually staffed so that they're not left unattended. You know, are there um, alternatives in terms of facilities that would be available to people 24 hours, especially restrooms. Where should those be? And then they need to be well managed. Our parks in Santa Monica. I was the 
chair of the Recreation and Parks Commission for many years. The problems in our parks that five or six of our city parks that homeless people are not in there 24 hours a day, they mm -hmm. leave at night. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the residents are afraid to use those parks. I always tell residents that if they use those parks, the homeless will move to other areas. Mm -hmm. What do we do to help that? If you were not executive director of the people concerning you looked inward at your organization, would you say you're doing a great job right now? In terms of open space, I mean, this is the, the, one of the biggest challenges I think we have is that homeless people have a right to be in public spaces. It is not a crime to be homeless and it's not a crime to be in public spaces. People's concerns about the activation and use and impact in, in positive and in negative ways about large numbers of homeless people. So they feel uncomfortable. And so what do we do about that? We as a community need to look at how do you activate community spaces. And if people came out and used the parks more, it's really about not being afraid and staying away from public spaces because you feel like you can't go there because there are homeless people there. If you look at any great cities in the world, public spaces are activated and there's constant movement and activity. I was asked to co-chair along with Kathleen Rawson and Bill Parent this steering committee on homelessness. And one of the areas we're looking at is this use and, and activation of, of public space, things that we can do as a community um, to, to reactivate the public spaces and parks in ways that are more user-friendly, more family-friendly. The reality usually isn't as bad as people think it is. As a collective community, we need to really look at how do we activate open spaces and parks are for everybody. If you don't have a place to live, sometimes parks is the most peaceful area for people to be and they're not bothering anyone if they're not panhandling, if they're not engaged in criminal activity, as much right to use that space. First of all, Santa Monica cannot solve homelessness on its own, just like the people concerned or any organization cannot solve it on its own. It's a city that is surrounded on three sides by the city of Los Angeles. In Santa Monica doesn't have a, all around it. People move, right? So homeless people move. They move between Santa Monica and Venice and West LA and the Palisades and Malibu. Santa Monica is part of a regional solution. So s there are things that we can do in Santa Monica and are doing that will have a a direct impact in both the numbers and the impact of homelessness. Santa Monica also has been very good in being a regional partner. If you are homeless in Santa Monica and you need dinner and you need medical help and you need mental health counseling and you need to get your life back on the right track, can the people concerned help? Absolutely. Our access center at 503 Olympic um, Avenue has all of those services available. Um, we're open seven days a week, not 24 hours a day. We're fully staffed Monday through Friday, shorter staff on Saturday, and basic services, so restroom, showers, laundry, and food service available on Sunday. Individuals can walk in. We take referrals from the help team, individuals in the community. You have rules, though. They're pretty basic. It's a violence, um, no destruction of property. Um, no stealing, um, being an active participant in your own well-being and recovery. In our residential programs, we have rules that are for the safety and well-being of all of the residents. We don't require people to be clean and sober in order to access services. We don't require them to be compliant with their medication. We serve people who are severely mentally ill with serious physical disabilities, chronic health conditions, victims of domestic violence. We really operate on the first tenet of social work, which is you meet people where they are, back to a life of self-sufficiency. You've been here 19 years. Yeah. That is an eternity, mm -hmm. especially in social services, mm -hmm. where people get burned out so quickly. How have you not burned out? I love the work. I, I love the people that we serve. I love the team I work with. I love the volunteers. I love this community, our donors, our volunteers, most importantly, the people we serve. I mean, I'm inspired by them every single day. And this is difficult work. I mean, our staff, you know, get up and come to work every day and do really, really difficult work with people in very serious and challenged circumstances with passion and commitment. And I just find that really inspiring. Passion and commitment, two words that I think everyone in and out of social services need to remember. I was driving uh, home around uh, midnight on Santa Monica Boulevard. A young woman started turning in circles, sat down in the middle of the fast lane, and then lay down in the street. I frantically backed up my car to try and stop another car from hitting her. My companion of the car got out, started waving at other cars, two cars just missed her. I thought she was going to die right then. Mm -hmm. 
we, along with another car, got her over to the sidewalk, stayed with her, called the police, but stayed with her for half an hour or more. I think it's a point for everybody. Everybody gets depressed. Everybody has problems. Compassion is something that's so incredibly important. Would she try this again? Mm -hmm. Could she get mental health counseling? Could she try and correct whatever depression she had in her life? A lot of times that spirals out of control. I hope the people concerned provides that ladder for people to climb out of the holes, the despair, the financial turmoil. I think that's how we see our work. You know, we, we, we often say here at, at the agency that we're not here to change people or fix people or rescue people. People change, fix, and rescue themselves. We are the support system. We provide the tools and resources and hopefully that compassionate support to individuals to make informed choices about their lives. Say, well, why are people homeless? You know, they're just lazy, they're shiftless, they choose to be homeless. Or uh, I've worked with thousands of homeless people in my career. I have never yet had a person say, you know, I woke up one day, I had this great life, and I just decided to throw it all away. I, I gave up my house, I gave up my money, I gave up my family, my friends, um, my job, my support system to go live on the street. I have never, ever heard that story. I've heard a lot of stories about individuals who said I had this great life and then this trauma happened to me. I got sick, I got divorced, I started using drugs or alcohol, I lost my job. There's a downward spiral to your point of being that ladder. What I've seen is the hole gets so deep for some people that they never see that their life is gonna be any different and they lose hope. Homelessness, in, in addition to being a manifestation of extreme poverty, is also the manifestation of hopelessness. Our job, in addition to providing those tools and resources, is to be able to say, you can do it. It's not only your job, it's everyone's job. So many of us are so incredibly lucky. OPPC, now the people concerned, does a great job. There are always problems in our community. Everything can be solved. Everything can be improved if we dig deep. Thank you so much, John. It's been a pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you for being here. This has been a great conversation with John. For Brock and your block, I'm Phil Brock. We'll see you next time.